Okay, let's look at number seven. They've given us a uh, grouped frequency table with incomes and the frequencies. So 60 people seem to be making anywhere from 200 to, to, to 300,000. 73 people have been making 300,000 to 400,000 or like 399,000 or whatever. One number before that. So that's a grouped frequency table and they want us to construct the relative and cumulative frequency tables. And then they want us to draw the frequency polygon which is the um, graph of the ordered pairs that are the midpoints of the classes and the frequencies. And that's how you make the frequency polygon. And for the O-drive, you have to use the upper class limit against the cumulative frequencies, which I have written here. So let's first create the relative and cumulative frequency table. Your classes will be the same for the uh, relative frequency table. that will be called RF. And of course, uh, I need to know the sum, so I'm going to bring that down a little. It's going to get mixed up with the sum. The sum of the frequencies is needed for me to construct a cumulative frequency table. I'm sorry, a relative frequency table. So the sum of all my points is 328. So my classes are 200 to 300, 300 to 400. So I need to write those down, 400 to 500. Uh, 500 to 600 and 600 to 700 okay now the relative frequency for that is the class frequency for that class which is 60 divided by the total frequency which is 328 so that'll just be 60 divided by 328 if I drag that down now I don't have to retype the same command because I use a cell location those are all the relative frequencies for my frequencies here and this is the relative frequency table I'll put it in like a light blue now for the uh, cumulative frequency table I have uh, classes and uh, cumulative frequencies class is a little wider and cumulative frequency is a little wider too. All right, now my classes is going to be, the first one will be the same, 200 to 300. And then as you recall, the next one will go back to the beginning of your data set, which is 200 to 400. And then I'm going to do 200 to, the next one is 500. And then 200 to the next one, which is 600 and then 200 to the last one, which is 700. Uh, and your cumulative frequencies, the first one will be 60. The next one will be 60 plus 73. 133. The next one will be 60 plus 73 plus 91. I've already calculated these values, so I'm just going to copy them grab it from the boundary of it, drag it down, and then say copy. Oh, sorry, co copy values again. Let's be careful not to do that. So copy, and here you just say paste values. I always, there you go, then you can bring in the actual values. Excellent. So here is the cumulative frequency table with classes and cumulative frequencies. Now, to draw the frequency polygon, you basically have to use the midpoints of your classes and graph them against the frequencies. So the frequency polygon, I'll just use the points I have here. Remember, you have to delete the first cell. It has to be an empty cell. And here is the frequency polygon. So you select the numbers, you go to insert, and you choose a line graph. There we go. So that's the frequency polygon. And if you actually want to type the name, there's your frequency polygon. Now I can do the same thing and do the ogive. The ogive is the graph of the upper class limits against the cumulative frequencies. Again, delete that thing there and select your numbers for the cumulative frequency line graph, which is called the ogive, and use the same thing. And it always has to be increasing, and it is. And instead of calling it cumulative frequencies, you call this the ogive, which is what it is, which is a line graph for cumulative frequencies, uh, the upper class limits against the cumulative frequencies. 
Now you could right click on these dots and do uh, add data labels. It tells you what the value is for each one. And then as I've said, you can roll them, you can change the colors. Actually, sorry, let me select them first and then bold them and change the colors so that they can affect it. There we go, and I can increase the font a bit. And you can do the same thing for the uh, frequency polygon by right clicking, inserting data labels, selecting them, and making them bold and larger. Uh, there's your frequency polygon, and there's your OJIP for number seven that is correct all right uh, I'm gonna put this at the bottom of number seven because I still need to do the uh, next one which wants us to create a pie chart so let me put these underneath each other there we go so now for number eight it says construct a pie chart so move this a little this way so you can see it and some more graph the histogram and the pie chart for the following frequency table. That pretty simple. You just select it, go to insert, and it can do a histogram. This time I'm gonna do a 3D histogram. And of course you have to connect the columns. So you do format data series and change the gap width to zero almost. 10% uh, is there. It's just a little bit of space there, so it looks nice. So here's the, here's the histogram for that table. And if I want to do the pie chart, it's that simple. I just select it and go to insert and go to the pies. And you can do a 2D, 3D. Let's do a 2D for this one. And here's my pie chart. Of course, I could name it my pie chart. And there you go, and you can right click and say add data labels, uh, turn them into maybe white color so you can see the numbers. Actually, sorry, you're gonna have to select them. Let's see, oh, it just does one at a time. Let's see if I unselect it. Format, it doesn't want me to add labels to it, so it only add the eight. Just delete that. Anyways, there's your frequency table. You can play with it. You see what you can do with a pie chart. If you click on it, you get all kinds of different situations here. You can see so you can actually select one that comes with the data labels on it. And these are all your options of selecting different pie charts. See? All just different types of pie charts. That looks cool. Just leave it like that. So there's your frequency, uh, there's the histogram for the frequency table, and there's the pie chart for the frequency table.